Hi there, my name is Julie Sebi. Uh, I am the owner and author of the Analytics Corner blog, and today we are talking Power Automate. In October of 2021, I started a new role on our Robotic Process Automation Team, RPA for short, to help automate manual processes. The solutions that we build utilize Power Automate, Power Automate Desktop, and Alteryx. As automation matures within the organization, we intend to deploy Power Automate as a self-service tool. Therefore, this is the first in a series of videos oriented towards beginner Power Automate users. So if you're just getting started with Power Automate, this is the place for you. Now, this video aims to help beginner Power Automate users get oriented with menus. It will cover what you want to pay attention to and what you want to ignore or ignore for now, as well as which menus can be really helpful for just exploring Power Automate. And so to start, you're going to want to go to this link. If I click on it, it just kind of already logs me in because I'm already in Power Automate, powerautomate.microsoft.com. And so if you are learning Power Automate for business purposes, use a work email as it's going to be connected to all of your other uh, professional Microsoft subscriptions and services. And because Power Automate is a cloud-based application, there is no download or installation. You will just access the software with the browser. So it's pretty simple, no config, nothing super complicated. Just create an account and log in. So I'm logged in here on this tab. Now, after logging in, everyone wants to start clicking in these menus here on the left-hand side of the screen, including myself. It's a very hard habit to break. However, the very first thing that you should do upon logging into Power Automate is go to environments and you're going to want to click on this and it will bring up a list of environments and you want to choose the correct environment. The correct environment is really going to be determined by your organization. So reach out to your admins to figure out what that is. So then you will click on the environment. And now we can move into the menus on the left. And if you choose the wrong environment, it's not really gonna hurt anything. You probably just won't have permissions to do anything. So once we're in the right environment, now it's time to start exploring. So I'm gonna show you what to poke at and what to leave alone. In this video, we are going to explore my flows, create, templates, connectors, and learn. Everything else you can just leave alone for, for the time being. So to create a flow, we go to the create menu. And from here, Microsoft gives you three ways to create a flow. You can start from blank, start from a template, or if I scroll a little bit farther down, you can start from a connector. Now, starting from blank might be a little bit intimidating because you kind of have to know what you're doing once you go into this. And so if it is, maybe you just want to skip forward to create from template or create from connector. But I'm still going to cover what all of these six options are here. So when you're in start from blank, Microsoft gives you six ways to create flows. Automated cloud flow, instant cloud flow, scheduled, desktop, business process, and process advisor. So I'm going to make this real easy. I'm just going to eliminate these last three. The desktop flows will take you to uh, the Power Automate desktop application if you have it installed. And pad is not under the scope of this series. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that as a different series. And you also have to have the application. If you don't, then this isn't going to do much. Business process flow helps ensure that people follow the same steps every time they execute a process. And it builds a flow that kind of provides a guide for helping people get work done. And this is super useful, but what we're going to do here is learn how to use Power Automate first before going into business process flows. And the same is true for the process advisor. Process advisor uses recordings of process to provide the developer with uh, advice on automation and process improvement. But we're going to learn to walk before we run. So process advisor is off the table for now. Now, the, that leaves us with three other options, automated Cloudflow, instant Cloudflow, and scheduled Cloudflow. We can also scratch scheduled Cloudflow. And the reason for that is even if you know that you want to schedule a Cloudflow um, to run at a certain time, usually adding that schedule is the last thing that you actually want to do. 
And instead, if that's the case, if that's what you're building, you'll want to start a instant cloud flow. And instant cloud flows are a really good starting point when you are not very familiar with triggers or you don't quite know what your trigger is going to be. Because basically what instant cloud flow means is you click a button and it runs. Uh, and, and I suppose folks could also just have use cases where they build flows where they want it to run when they click the button. That's also a valid option. And then automated cloud flow is the one that I use most often. I, you will use automated cloud flows when you know what trigger you want. Like I said, even if you know you want it on a schedule, the schedule gets added later. So for example, I can trigger a cloud flow anytime a new item is added to a SharePoint list, or I can trigger a cloud flow when a message is added to Teams. So the two most common options used under start from blank are automated cloud flow and instant cloud flow. So that covers the start from blank section. And here you have a start from template. Now starting from a template can be an easy way to get to know Power Automate. The solution comes pre-built, which is super helpful, but you can also modify it. It's not like you can't change the templates. You can make it your own. And so the templates provide a detailed path for how to achieve a specific task and build out automations. You can also browse a lot of existing templates, either from this create menu, or if you click on this menu, it's basically going to take you to a screen with a whole bunch of templates. Both of these will have search options, and they also have a couple of different tabs that will bring up different templates. If I click on the email temp the email tab, it'll bring up templates associated with email triggers, email actions. And so just to demonstrate, I'm going to go to the templates tab. And let's say that you want to send an email when someone creates a new item in SharePoint. I'm going to type that into search and see what pops up. Now I have several options to choose from. This first option here is exactly what I was looking for. So I'm going to click on this and it'll bring me to a screen showing the components of the solution and also the connections that are required for the solution. And you can see that it's automatically logged me into to SharePoint and I would need to sign in in order to get the Outlook connection. Now, when signing in, you are creating a connection that is going to be visible in the data connections menu. And I just want you to know that I'm not going to dive into that in this particular post, but connections are how Microsoft access accesses data for specific user accounts in applications like Teams, SharePoint and Outlook. Every application you touch in Power Automate requires a connection. But don't worry, I will cover connections in more detail in a later post. Once you have signed in, the continue button will go from gray to blue. You'll be able to click continue and it'll take you to the flow. But I'm going to stop at this point and go back to the create page. And we are going to look at the third option, create from connector. A connector is a piece of in infrastructure used to connect to a specific application like SharePoint, Teams, or Outlook. And so this screen provides a really great way to learn because it will take you to a connectors menu. So let's just click on SharePoint. And here you have a list of all of the different SharePoint triggers, which is essentially a way to help you understand all of the ways that you can run automations from SharePoint. And then it also provides a list of templates, uh, which is, is a good place to explore and learn. So hopefully you can see that from the create menu, you have ways to get started. If you know what you're doing, launch and start from blank. If you need a little bit of inspiration or a little bit of help, start from template or start from a connector. Once you have actually started creating flows, your flows will appear in the My Flows menu. And if you haven't created a flow yet or no one has shared a flow with you, then this section is just going to be blank. Flows that have been shared with you will live in this tab called Shared With Me. So with that said, while we're in this screen, let me show you how to share flows and what that actually means. I'm going to go to cloud flows and I created this flow here called production Gardendale shrink. And if I want to share it with a coworker, I just need to click on the three dots and share the workflow. And when I click on share, 
it's going to let me add other owners. And this is going to be connected to your Active Directory. And so I can search for other people in my organization. And it'll also tell you what connections are in use. So whenever you share a workflow with someone, they still have to create uh, valid connections to all of the applications and connectors that are used in your flow. And that is how you share flows in Power Automate. Now, I know that seems really simple, um, but I, I will call it out because when I first started using Power Automate, I would come into this screen, which is essentially where you start working with the flow. And I was looking for that share option in here and it doesn't live here. It lives in this My Flows menu. And then lastly, if we go to the Learn menu, Learn is really just a hyperlink. And that will take you to the Microsoft documentation site. From here, you can learn more about Power Automate and creating flows. And in addition to the documentation site, I would also recommend the Learn site. There will be uh, learning paths here and tons of different modules and learning paths that you can do. These are all pretty quick and short. So that's where this video is gonna end. Go out there and get started building your Power Automate flows. The next video in the series is going to cover triggers and actions. Dropping soon. Thank you and have a great day.